La France est aujourd'hui devant un choc. Un choc qui est celui d'un attentat, car c'est un attentat. On n'a rien fait, on n'est que, que témoin. Hein. On a vu des policiers courir, on en a vu un qui avait l'air d'être blessé à la jambe. The terrifying moment terrorists strike in the heart of Paris. Get down, get down, says one resident watching from a rooftop. Don't move, a friend calls out, as one man takes a closer look at the shooting below. In full combat gear, these aren't amateurs, but disciplined, well-trained killers with assault weapons. It's mid-morning. The gunman's target is a satirical magazine. Then the men turn their attention to a police officer whose image we've obscured. He's injured, but they go on to kill him in cold blood. Leaving the man's lifeless body on the pavement, they then head to a getaway car. But not before gloating about the attack, which has shocked and appalled around the world. What we know so far is that a car with three masked men arrived at Rue Ambert, number 10, inside Charlie Hebdo. They used automatic weapons, Kalashnikovs, and killed whoever was inside. So we think 11 to 12 deaths. And that's including those who died inside, as well as two of our colleagues outside. There are others who are wounded, five seriously, some critically. Time will tell if there are more victims. They dumped their vehicle to take another, so you can imagine, all our colleagues are after them. So we are using video technology to try and track them. We're searching through all videos and CCTV and we're hoping to find them quickly. Firstly, those men are our most wanted, so that stays the priority. They're armed and extremely dangerous and things will certainly evolve behind the scenes. The gunman left behind a sickening and bloody scene. Forcing a staff member at gunpoint to enter a key code, they walked into a boardroom as an editorial meeting was being held. Calling out individuals' names, they shot their targets at point-blank range. Apparently shouting, God is great, they wanted dead journalists and cartoonists. When the shooting was over, there were already a lot of police around. Lots of police showed up, but there was nothing we could have done. I recollect I saw calm men, I would even say determined men, because I immediately confused them for police officers or professionals. I told myself, they must be surveillance police, something bad must have happened. I was on my balcony and I heard a loud noise which sounded like firecrackers, and then I heard it again. It lasted for about 10 minutes. Then I saw policemen running and I saw that one was injured. Amongst those massacred, Stéphane Charbonnier, editor of the weekly publication Charlie Hebdo. Known as Sharb, he'd received threats before, but refused to tone down the magazine. He'd strongly defended cartoons featuring the Prophet Muhammad, once saying, I'd prefer to die standing than live on my knees. We're in a weird situation in France. Islam is the second religion in the country in terms of practitioners, and in fact nobody knows anything about Muhammad. Nobody knows anything about this religion. It is a religion that scares people because every time we talk about it, it is when we talk about bomb attacks done by an extreme minority. Also murdered, the magazine's lead cartoonist Jean Cabou, and George Walinsky, an 80-year-old satirist who had been drawing cartoons since the 1960s. 
famous names in France known for ridiculing those in power. With the gunman on the run, the injured poured out of the building. A normal day's work with deadlines to meet and articles to be written had turned into a morning of slaughter and terror. It was an exceptionally barbaric attack committed here in Paris against the newspaper, which also means against freedom of speech and against journalists. The security level in Paris has been raised and we are looking for the perpetrators of this crime. Today, France has undergone a shock and has suffered a terrorist attack. The attack happened not far from the very centre of the French capital, less than a kilometre away from the Place de la Bastille. The Charlie Hebdo offices are on this street, Rue Nicolas Appert. They carried out their assault on the building's second floor. Following their attack, they made their getaway, but as this photo shows, they were seemingly confronted by police around the corner in Ali Vert. There also appears to have been another shootout just yards away on Boulevard Richard Lenoir, a main thoroughfare that runs through much of Paris, where this police car's windscreen was repeatedly shot at. It was near here the injured policeman was shot dead. It's thought they then drove towards the northeast of the city and abandoned their vehicle here before hijacking a second car and turning the driver out into the road. A short time later, the original getaway car was discovered. What clues will it deliver as to who would carry out such a crime and why? I know that this house and this country stands united with the French people in our opposition to all forms of terrorism and we stand squarely for free speech and democracy and these people will never be able to take us off those values. To see the kind of cowardly, evil attacks that took place today, I think, reinforces once again why it's so important for us to stand in solidarity with them just as they stand in solidarity with us. Within minutes, there was an explosion of outrage and sympathy on Twitter and other social media sites. Amongst those commenting are the journalists, Piers Morgan writing horrendous story from Paris. Comedian David Williams posted, executing unarmed cartoonists can never be the will of any god. And thousands of people have now posted this picture. Je suis Charlie, I am Charlie, supporting the freedom of speech and in response to the gunman claiming they had killed Charlie Hebdo. The United States Embassy in France even added the comment to its official Twitter page. Ian Hislop, the editor of Britain's satirical magazine Private Eye, commented that the dead journalists paid a very heavy price for exercising their comic liberty. Very little seems funny today, he said. Cartoonists are fighting back with their pens. They are uniting to stand up for freedom of expression. France is on its highest state of alert. There are now 3,000 extra police on the streets. Security has been tightened at several newspapers in France and around the world. Charlie Hebdo has been repeatedly threatened for its caricatures of the Prophet Mohammed and other controversial sketches. Its offices were firebombed in 2011 and the magazine's been taken to court unsuccessfully for insulting Islam. It's been a bloody few weeks for France. The country has suffered a number of attacks. A van drove into a Christmas market injuring shoppers. And in Dijon, another driver ploughed into pedestrians, hurting a dozen people. He was shouting, God is great. But this attack is different. Calm, organised killers who drive an inconspicuous vehicle and knew when to strike. They can handle with ease an AK-47, firing whilst running. They had done their gruesome homework. 
Speaking fluent French with no accent, they apparently claimed to be affiliated to Al-Qaeda. That terror organisation and the Islamic State group have both repeatedly threatened to attack France. Afin de favoriser la neutralisation dans les meilleurs délais. In order to facilitate the apprehension of the three criminals who committed these barbarous acts with the smallest possible delay, all the resources of the interior and justice ministries have been mobilized in order that the investigation gets underway quickly. As the day drew to a close, there were demonstrations and vigils in Paris and around the world. And the French president addressed the nation. Mes chers compatriotes, aujourd'hui la France Today, France has been attacked at its very heart, in Paris, in the building of a paper, and this violent attack killed 12 people and wounded some more. Today, in your name, I would like to express our gratefulness to those people who are wounded, to all those who have been killed by this cowardly assassination. Today, they are our heroes. The shooting in central Paris lasted just minutes. The repercussions are only just beginning. And the gunmen who killed with such ease and precision are carrying out the rest of their plan. For now, escaping capture and justice.